Okay, hello folks, uh, this is Tom Oje here, and this is actually going to be my first real Unreal tutorial. I uh, haven't been using it that long, so I haven't really felt worthy of putting anything up there out there for you folks, but um, Unreal's got a huge learning curve, and I kind of figured a few things out, so I thought I would do a little tutorial on how to get your MetaHuman to look at a target. So the, th the idea is... We want flexible look at. Here I've got a target actor. This can be any actor. I've just chosen to use a target here. And we want the character to be able to look. And it's not just the eyes that are moving from side to side. It's also the head. The head is moving a little bit along with it. The other important aspect is we need this to be available to sequencers so that we can actually sequence this. And we can have the character um, following that target around. So here in the sequencer, um, what we're going to do is not only can, the, can we animate this target and have it move around the, the space and have the character look at it, we can also change the degree to which the character is looking at it. So you can see here's a property called look at strength, and I simply have that going from 1, which is max, like 100%, down to 0. And as the character, as the thing goes to 0, so I'm just going to put this in a more extreme position here, and I, we can see that hello and we can see that as we animate that there she goes back and now she's looking so that's the strength value so if I go over here and I just play with that strength value set it to zero she's not going to look at all no matter what we do with the target won't make a difference whereas when the strength is at one then the character is looking and we can actually make the strength a fraction right we can go 0.5 and then it's sort of a soft look at this might be really great for mocap animation, we do a facial mocap, and you want to just make sure that the character's eyes, this is the situation, this is why I developed it. We did a bunch of mocap with actors, and they were reading off a teleprompter, so their eyes are kind of going left to right reading off the teleprompter, but they're also, their eyes are part of the performance, because sometimes they'd be remembering something, looking up in the top left corner, the way you do when you're remembering something, so we wanted to keep that. So you need to be able to kind of keyframe when you are taking over their eyes, and when you're letting the performance take over. So that's a really important aspect. All right, I'm going to roll this back now to a previous version of this project. I may be referencing this project from time to time just so that I remember uh, some of the settings because this is really, I've only done it a couple of times. We're going to end up doing some fairly simple blueprinting here. I, don't, I wouldn't call this extremely complex. If you're new to blueprinting, this might look daunting, but I'm going to try to walk you through some principles and maybe we'll even learn a, a trick or two about blueprinting as we go. But uh, for now, let's just start with, um, with the tutorial. So here we've got our base character. So a couple of things to start with. This is a MetaHuman. I've done all, all the imports from MetaHuman, brought it in from Quixel Bridge. Uh, I've got a sequence already that's taken from some mocap uh, that we've done. There we go. So this is just an idle sequence. There's nothing really exciting going on here. It's just great to have that as a test to sort of see. So here's there. There's our sequence. I'm going to move up a little bit closer. So you can see right now her eyes are kind of pretty much fixed in a particular spot uh, with the mocap. Head's moving a little bit. So we want to keep some of that, obviously. Um, basic movement here. Okay. Uh, in terms of preparing uh, the metahuman uh, or anything else uh, for this, really there wasn't too much to do. Obviously, I've dragged the metahuman onto the stage. I've also created a target point. Um, in fact, I wasn't supposed to do that until the tutorial, so let me delete this sucker, and I'll just show you how I create that target point. It doesn't have to be a target point. In fact, it can be any actor at all. To me, the target point seemed great because then I can animate that independently, but another great way you could do this is to tie it to the camera, right? And so if you have a camera actor that you're using in your sequencer and you want to just have the character looking directly at the camera, that's a perfect way to do that. You have a camera actor as your target. In order to better demonstrate this, though, because it's not immediately obvious, if you're using the camera, I'm going to have that, that target, that reticule there. So with the way we add that uh, to the scene, I'm going to close the sequencer just real quick, and we're going to add that target to the scene. So uh, we're just going to use the add, and it's not going to be, you're not going to find this thing unless you go all the way over to add cla all classes, and here's our target point down here near the bottom. So we've got that target point. If we want to rename it, we can, but... That's fine. So I'm just going to put it up here kind of around where eye level might be. And then I'm going to put it over here so that it's quite obvious when once we have all this working. All right, let's take a look at the basic mechanics of how we get 
a character's eyes to look at anything or how anything can be uh, targeted to anything. So if you select your a metahuman in your outliner and we've got the body and the face, that's going to be really important. Uh, and we can see what's controlling it. So the first thing that's really important here is we're going to want to use our animation blueprint for both the body and for the face. And these are some default blueprints that come in. So um, for the animation class, for the body, it's using the same um, animation class as the name of the static mesh. So she's using the female short normal weight body and there's that class. And if you ever need to see these things, which we will be doing, we can pop over here to the content browser by clicking on that button. It'll take you right away, right into the deep, deep, deep into your tree to find that blueprint. So you need to double click on that here and you can open it up. If you're following along, this would be a great time for you to open up your character blueprint as well because I've added one little thing here, which is this default slot. To be honest, I kind of added it at random because I wasn't getting any of my animations to work in Sequencer until I had added this in. So the way that was done uh, was I, you know, if I delete that, and this was normally just wired up like this, that's what you get by default. Uh, if we were to compile, we'd see that line going through. And so what I wanted to say was I'm just going to bring in... Uh, default slot. There we go. And uh, animation is not my strong suit in Unreal, so I'm not exactly sure what that what that is. I just know that I wasn't getting my animations to work without it. So, regardless. So that's um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting our look at for the head because this is the body so the body controls the head movement. We're going to be sticking that in between this thing. So I'll come back to that in just a minute. Actually, this might be a great time to show you the mechanic for getting something to, to look at something. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So um, basically, if you type in look at, so all I did was I, I right clicked here and then I typed in look at, you get a look at in the skeletal controls. So let's take a little bit of, let's take a look at what this, uh, this dialogue has here. So this node, um, allows us to, first of all, choose which bone we want to modify. It allows us to kind of reorient that bone in case the default orientation of the bone doesn't actually match the, um, the orientation that we're expecting. This is the case for the metahuman eyes. We're going to have to play around with that, those numbers a little bit. And then uh, a little bit further down, we can actually choose what the target is. Now, by default, this is a bone. So if you want the person to look at their hand, for example, or if you've got like a, a slot, they're holding a weapon, you want them to look at the weapon or something like that, then you can do that. Um, so that's the look at target, um, right? You can choose, you can see, you can choose a bone here. But if we open up this and we change the binding, um, we can expose this look at location as a pin. Once that's done, it allows us to actually control and hard code the look at location here. So if I stick this in between here and here, all right, it, it's going to automatically insert these local to component nodes, which is perfectly fine. Has to kind of do that. You can see that the, the the pose icon is blue here, and here it's white. So it just lets you know that we're working with a, a local uh, component. So um, if I set this location to whatever. Right now it's going to be kind of low on the ground and down and I uh, just run this sucker. Uh, let's compile and save and then just down over here. I'll just go into simulate. Uh, am I still in the sequencer? Good. I'm not in the sequencer. I'm going to go into simulate just so that I can actually see. So if I were to change this, I don't know if I can change this while I'm simulating, but you can see she's already, her, her head position's already moved. So I change that to 500. Ah, maybe that's not working in real time. These things, eh? when you're recording a tutorial, if you're new, sometimes things don't work exactly as expected. However, the principle is definitely applies here and uh, I'm probably just forgetting one small thing. The point is that um, you can control the look at location with a number. Now, that's great if you have a fixed number and then your job is pretty much done. You just type that in here and away you go. But we want to do a lot more than that. We want the look at location to be dynamic and we want it to come from the location of something else on our stage, such as this target point. 
So we need a way to connect the look at location of that target point to this animation graph. And we've got to do it for the head in the and the body animation. And we've got to do it also for the eyes. And that's going to happen over here in the facial animation. So if I go to the facial animation, I look at the animation blueprint for that. Just scroll down. Okay, we'll see that there's all sorts of stuff already here. This Hellraiser look is, is pretty crazy. Let me just turn that off. Show, we're going to go to the character. We're going to say bones, and I just don't want to see any of the bones right now. Okay, fine. Um, so there's already a lot of stuff that's going on in the animation graph and the event graph for metahumans. And most of it has to do with enabling the AR kit so that, you know, folks that are using AR kit to do live uh, mo uh, motion capture of the head, the body, uh, that kind of stuff kind of happens in here. It's all, actually, it's not for the body. It's for the, for exclusively for the head. And the um, head rotation, right, is already kind of built into this AR kit. So we kind of have to watch out for that as well. And since all of this stuff is happening in the face anim blueprint, the changes that we make here are not necessarily, so here we have this same animation, right? So you can see already we've got the AR head kit rotation, AR kit head rotation. We don't want to remove that because we don't want to reduce any functionality on the metahuman. So this is where the post-processing blueprint comes into play. So post-processing just happens after the, the main animation blueprint uh, takes over at our um, at our animation tick. So once every frame, basically, it's going to run the animation blueprint. Then it's going to run the post process. So what we're going to be doing for the face is we're actually going to work in the post process. So I'm going to close up face anim blueprint. So here you can see the event graph is empty. There's nothing happening there. But if you want to see the anim graph, then you have to look for it down here under my blueprint anim graph. Double click that. And now you can see there's also stuff here. However, we've got a nice clean pose here. So we're going to stick our look at in between these guys over here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I know we're going to need a little bit more room. So you can guess what we're going to go for here. We're looking for a, the look at. And we're going to have two of them. And um, so we're going to have one for the left eye, one for the right eye. So what bone are you going to modify? Well, if you know metahumans, you know there are a million bones. Oops. So I'm going to just try to save myself some trouble by typing it in here. And it's going to be facial L-I. All right. I can, um, I can copy. I can duplicate this with control D. There we go. And this is going to be, you guessed it, R-I. There it is there. All right. And so we can, I'm holding the shift key down so I can grab that point and bring it over here just as a bit of a time saver. Bring that up there. There we go. And because I am weird that way, I like to clean things up. So I'm just going to, you'll see. I'll spend an inordinate amount of time in this tutorial cleaning things up. All right. Then we can compile that. So right now we've kind of set up the takeover of the uh, of the eye. Now remember, like we did with the other one, we're going to expose those pins. So we can go that and expose that as a pin. Same with this guy over here. Okay, this gives us a little spread things out a bit. And if I compile that, you can see we are looking kind of off to the to the side here. That's because that's set to one hundred. Set that to zero, that to zero. For example, I recompile. There you go. Now we're kind of looking, looking forward. Well, looking down actually. It's it's kind of bizarre because of the uh, the rotation of that particular bone. Okay, so that's great. So now we've kind of set up the basics for how we want this uh, look at function to work, but we need to control the location. In addition to the location, we also want to be able to control the alpha. When the alpha is set to zero, that means that we are not using the look at node at all. It's bypassing it completely. 
when the alpha is 1.0, then we are completely using the look at node. And as you might guess, if the alpha is something in between, like 0.5, it's going to mix the, uh, the performance of the, where the eye would normally look based on your animation. It would mix that with the look at. So that's where you can play with that. So again, we want to figure out how can we get these pins uh, to expose out to the... Uh, the actor so we can easily select it on the actor and then eventually how do we also get that to expose to the sequencer so that we can animate it as well all right so just uh gonna save that and there's one more thing we got to do so we've been talking about how do we attach the target to the character how do we uh, associate the alpha variable to the character and for the head we also want to um have a percentage of the look at actually apply to the head. In other words, if I move something far to the left, the eyes are going to look that way. But if it's too far, it's going to be really unnatural. Um, the eyes are going to move, but normally with a human being, your head would also move to help you look in that direction. Otherwise, it's going to be like really extreme. So, but we don't want the head to completely look because that's going to be like a cat. Have you ever looked at, watched a cat follow a laser beam? Their entire head moves because their eyeballs don't move all that much. Whereas humans, we can stand with our head perfectly still and look left and right. So a normal realistic um, blend of head movement with eye movement is maybe around 50%, but you can play with that number. So in addition with the head, we're going to have another variable, which is going to allow us to control the amount of which the head is going to move to follow the tracking object as well. Okay, so all of this stuff, where do we want it to happen? So when we're trying to kind of come up with uh, some coding, some blueprint stuff. Oh, this is lovely. There we go. This is just lovely. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, we, we can see the look at it is <laughs> kind of working. It's kind of nasty. Uh, and, you know, this is going to happen a lot while we're doing it. So if this makes, makes you uncomfortable, I apologize in advance. Um, <laughs> we'll get it sorted out eventually. Um, so when we're planning things out, we got to figure out how do we want to use this. Putting ourselves in the shoes of... The animator, for example, here we are developing some code, but we want this to be really, really convenient for our artists to work with, right? That might be you as an indie developer, but it also may be a team. And so we want to make things super convenient. So if you're thinking about, I'm animating this character, it's probably best if when I click on the character, I've got some options over here that I can play with. So the way we add options to this thing when we have the character, this is all the stuff that comes by default, right? And in fact, if I want to collapse all of that, I can just go up to that gear here, collapse all categories, and there we go. I'm going to op keep transform open. I think that's a good one to, to have open. So um, transform and maybe, I don't know, what do I like here? Anyway, we'll just leave it for now. So where I'm going to be able to control that is in the blueprint. And what I've done here, um, so this is our metahuman, right? And we'll just go into our metahuman. And I've got, when I downloaded the MetaHuman from Quixel Bridge, if I open up that, we'll see at the bottom here, there's our MetaHuman. But what I actually did was I, this was my original MetaHuman, actually, and when I right-clicked on it and I said, uh, create child blueprint class. Now, why would I do such a thing? Well, creating a child blueprint, so this is now the child, I've just renamed stuff. So I've renamed that to Jayun, and here I've actually called this MetaHuman base. Because if I'm going to spend all this time creating some create look at functionality, I'd like that to apply to any metahuman character that I have, not just this particular mesh. So the child is going to allow me to control the actor on the stage, that particular actor. But if that child inherits from uh, a base class, then I can do all of my stuff in the base class. Now, if you want to ignore this part and you don't want to have a base class, it's perfectly fine. If you're just working with a single metahuman, that's totally cool. Otherwise, um, you can look up look up child classes or parent classes and figure out the best way to approach that. Uh, my approach may not have actually been uh, may not be the best way to do it. So you know your mileage may vary, but the principle is there. The principle is we're going to add, for example, these variables to the base class, and then any instance of that character that I might want to have, let's say she's got different clothing on, uh, things like that, it will apply to those different uh, child classes. So I'm going to go and open up um, my base class here. Actually, that's, there we go. And let's just take a look at what's going on here. So 
I'm just going to create a couple of variables. I'm not going to touch any of this other stuff here. I don't really care about that for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm really only interested in exposing those three variables. First variable is what is the target that I should be looking at? It's going to be some kind of actor that's going to be on the stage. That could be a camera actor. It could be some object. Uh, it could be the target uh, actor that I've created. So that's the first variable we're going to create. The second variable is going to be the amount of blend or the amount of alpha. So the amount, the, I call that the look at strength, where zero means you're not looking at it and one means you are looking. And then the last variable is going to be that, that head percentage or head amount. So that's going to be the, the, the amount to which the head moves or by which the head moves. So we're going to go over here in my blueprint again under variables. I'm in, uh, currently I'm in the base, but you can do this. If you don't want to do the base, you can just do this directly on your MediHuman. It's going to work just perfectly fine. It just won't be as transferable. So I'm going to go to variable. The first variable is, the most important one is, what's the target that I'm looking at? So the target's going to be a, an actor. So um, well, let's just rename this here first before I choose anything. So rename, that's going to be uh, look at target. There we go. And I think I'd prefer the A to be capitalized. It doesn't really matter. Unreal is going to do that for me. So the look at target. Now, Boolean is just a true or false value, yes or no. That's not what we want to do here. We're going to go down here, and we're just going to type in, it's going to be a type of actor. And so we're looking for an object. There's the object type of actor. And we want the actual reference to the actual object on the stage. Not an abstract reference to some class, but the actual object that is on the stage. We want to associate that object with this character. So if I say object reference, there we go, actor. Now there's two other things we got to do to this variable. The first is we got to click on this eye icon. That changes the variable from a private variable to public. A private variable is only available to this uh, blueprint, whereas a public uh, variable is actually also exposed to the editor and can be accessed by kind of anything. So you can use this if you want to even dynamically change the, um, the, the target. You can do that by making this a public variable. So we're going to do that. So then next we're going to add another variable. This is going to be our look at strength. Now, the look at strength is just going to be a number between 0 and 1, and we want to allow fractions. So the correct type of variable for that is a float. A float is any number, any number, really. Like, it could be 0 0.5, it could be negative 10. Those are, those are all types of floats. And once again, we want to expose that to the editor. Now, there's a couple other things I'm going to do over here on the detail side of this variable. And so we've already chosen the variable type. It's always a great idea to add a description here. Um, the amount um, by which the character looks at the target. Okay, that'd be nice because then when you, if, if you know you have a developer or a, sorry, an artist that's hovering over the variable, they can see the highlight just like you can see here. Now we want to make sure that this variable. So we've already got that variable set to public, and then we want to expose it to cinematics, which allows this variable then to be animated in the sequencer. This is really great because otherwise your sequencer would be cluttered with all the variables that you create for your blueprints and really there's only a few that you actually want to be able to manipulate from the sequencer. So um, we're going to turn exposed to cinematics on. And then speaking of being a nice friendly uh, developer for our artists, I'm going to set the slider range. That doesn't make sense for this thing to go past one and the value range as well. The value range and the slider range are pretty much the same. I don't actually use the slider because for whatever reason the updating is extremely slow in the UI, so I'm just going to type it in anyway. But So this is a lot, says we can't go higher than 1. I don't, what would it look like? What does 120% look like? I, you know, that, I think that's going to be a very uncomfortable value at the very least. So that's all we need to do here. So that's our look at target and our look at strength, and we're going to create one more variable for that head. I'm going to call that head move mount also a float because it's going to off operate in the same kind of rules. We're going to also make that um, exposed to cinematics and the same slider range 0 to 1. You might even set that to 0.5 or 0.7 if you wanted to completely limit what the creatives can do, but that's a fairly straightforward thing to do. Okay, so there we go. We're going to compile all that. Yeah, you had me nervous there for a second. And we're going to save it. And that's it. Now, oh, geez, those eyes. We've got to fix those eyes. We've got to fix those eyes. Now you can see that. Uh-oh, did I not expose that? So 
we're just going to pop back into the blueprint. It looks like I have had this issue before where it just doesn't sometimes... Ah, yes, see, I've forgotten to make that public, so we'll just... User error. There we go. And we don't need to even worry about that. Now, I've kept those variables. You may have noticed I kept them in the default category. Um, in an ideal world, you'd actually create a category maybe called look at, and then it would appear like here we see physics, networking, input. We'd actually have a category called look at. Problem is, at this point in version 5.3 of Unreal, you can't reorder them very reliably. And so, you know, I want the var those variables to be kind of up near the top. So I'm going to keep them in the default. Okay. Now, we have these variables that are available as soon as I click on the character in the stage. And um, we also know that I can go into here, into the blueprint, and I can also change those variables uh, within the blueprint. So if I find default there, I can change them in here. But that is not the right way to do that, because now if I change it in the blueprint, that means that every instance of this character in every sequence on every stage is going to have those values baked in. We don't want that. We want that to be very specific to what's happening out here on the stage, and we want to override those variables. So this is where we're going to change it. Okay, so we have our look at target, and this is a lovely little pull down because the type is actor. It's just looking for anything that's an actor. So any one of these things, and if I were to create a camera actor, it would also appear in this list, is a valid input for this, um, for this variable. So I'm just going to use my target point here. And I'm going to set my look at strength just already, just so that we can see it working, to 1. And I'm going to set the head move amount to 0.5. So that's just all ready to go. Uh, you can see that there's a slider here, but you can see just how slow the updating on that slider is. No idea why that might be. Uh, it's still trying to update. So uh, that's why I just, you know, type directly into that area. Okay, if it would like to... Holy moly. And we're going to save when I can. Okay, well, Unreal is figuring itself out, which, you know, we've all been there. We've all had Unreal. Maybe it's going to crash on me. It's hard to say. Uh, let's plan our next steps. So we've yeah. got the variables, but we've set the variables on the character's blueprint. Holy, thank you. Jeez Louise. Okay, we've set the variable on the character's blueprint. Where we need to use the variable, as we saw before, is we need to use it on these uh, animation blueprints, right? And so, and did I have a window open with those already? I did not. That's spoiler alert. Okay, so we're gonna. What we want to do is we want to expose those variables to the character blueprint. So if uh, or the animation blueprint, I should say. So if we pop back into here, and we know we're not using the face animation blueprint, we're using the face post process animation blueprint in this case so we've already got that kind of set up so we know we just if only we could just grab the variable out of here and stick it in and wire it up to that alpha and grab the target and wire it up to the look at location we'd be golden but the animation blueprint at this time has no idea about those variables so what we're going to do is we're going to pop into the event graph and we're going to make uh, those variables available to the animation graph. So basically what we want to do is we need to make the animation graph, which includes the event graph, but we need to make the animation graph aware of the character, which it automatically is. We just have to sort of wire it up. And then we have to make the animation graph pull out those variables that we've already created on the character so that it knows it can use them. So let's, and we need to do this in a way that's also processor um, friendly. And I'll explain that in just a minute. So the mechanism by which we're going to grab uh, the character is um, we're going to use a, a node here in the event graph called uh, get actor of class. Now, where do we actually wire that up? Where is the execution going to come from? Well, we know that we want to get those variables. We could actually, theoretically, we could have used this directly in the animation graph, but it's not thread safe, which means it's gonna, it ain't, it ain't good. And if we take a look at uh, the documentation for get actor of class, it says, this is a slow operation used with caution, i.e. do not use it every frame. 
So we know we're not doing this on the update animation or on a tick or anything like that. This has got to be done kind of once. Because what it's doing really is it's going through the entire manifest of all of the actors that in your scene, which could be large. In this case, it's not going to have a significant performance impact because we only have like seven or eight actors. But in a complicated game, we've got NPCs and gr blades of grass. That could take a long time. And if we do have to look that up every single time, it's really going to slow down our processing. So what we're going to do is we're going to cache that. We're going to stick that actor into a variable. We only need to do that once because the actor is not changing. This actor has been associated with this particular animation blueprint, so that actor is not, that instance is not going to change. So what we're going to do this is we're going to do this on event blueprint initialize animation. Um, there's also on start, but we don't want to do that here. Um, it needs to get done before the animation is initialized, and that means it's only going to get done that one time, and it's going to be specific to the animation, so that we can wire those up. So now all we need to do is, well, what class do we want to use? So if I, if you remember, when we were look, talking about the, our metahumans, uh, and we went into the metahuman that I created, we've got these two blueprints that we can use. Um, and again, depends. If you have, if you're just going with the one blueprint, then use that. If you're going with the parent blueprint, um, then this allows us to be even more global because all our metahumans could inherit from that parent blueprint and that makes this code very portable. So I'm clicked on that and then I'm going to click this tiny little button over here which just assigns it. And sometimes you got to double click it. Okay, so that's done. So now um, our, at least on initialize, our uh, anim graph knows now, will be able to know about this actor. However, we said it was an expensive operation, so that'll disappear as soon as we've initialized the animation. Once we get into the animation tick, we don't know about this anymore. So, what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a variable. We're going to promote this as a variable. So we've gotten the actor class, and now we're going to promote it as a variable, and we can call that something like current actor. Sounds like a good name for it. We don't need to expose that to anybody. That's going to be just internal for here. But now, basically, this is our cached actor. Um, so essentially we're gra at the very beginning of the animation we're getting that expensive operation we're grabbing that actor and we're setting it to a variable called current actor which we're going to be able to use every animation tick. So now we can go with our update animation. So let's see what can we do with our current actor. So I'm just going to um, Put it, bring it back up here. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to pull that up here, get current actor. Now that we have a reference to the current actor, we also have a reference to all the variables uh, that we have defined on that actor. Only the public variables, the variables where the eyeball is open down here. And you remember, we set those three variables to public. So we have access to all three of those variables. Now we're doing the face, and the face does not include head rotation with a metahuman, so we don't need the head amount. So we're really only concerned about two variables. Let's see if we can get them. So the first variable that we want to get is that look at strength. So if I type in get look at, there it is. That's the name of the variable that I defined, and I can grab it. So that's perfect. I can also, theoretically, do that right here inside the animation graph. Since I have access to my current actor, I can do that over here, and I can also say, get look at strength. However, if I wire this up and compile, I'm going to start getting some, uh, some complaints about stuff. And uh, those are going to be, they're a little bit beyond my pay grade to understand exactly the nature of those campaigns. It's called not thread safe, um, which has to do, I think, with the way that uh, an animation has to be very, very fast, right? The update process has to be super, super fast so they can run in that thread. Otherwise, it's going to block the thread and all the animations are going to grind to a slowdown. So in order to do that, we keep... Uh, we, we keep all of our animation functions in the anim graph just really pure functions as opposed to uh, more complicated things. So we're going to do that in here. This runs just before the anim graph runs anyway. So we're going to create these, and it seems a little redundant, but we're simply going to promote this value, which is currently coming from our actor's blueprint. We're going to promote it to a local variable now here, okay, on 
our blueprint, on the animation blueprint. So now we've got a very safe value that's been set once when the animation updates, and then that's it. Now we can use it in our anim graph very easily by just grabbing it here and saying, let's just get that. And um, I'm going to wire it up to this one. I'm going to wire it up to that one. And you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to double click on here to add that node. I'm going to right click on this and say straighten connection. Whoa, hey now. Undo. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to say straighten connection to the reroute node. And there we go. OCD has been, oh, and then I had to go and move it, right? Yeah, this is the life, folks. This is the life. Okay, there we go. So now we've basically connected that look at strength from the character blueprint through our event graph, which happens once, one time uh, for every animation update. It's very, very, that's a very inexpensive operation, so we don't have to worry that's happening frequently. Because that's going to change as we're animating it. We may want to animate that look at amount. So it has to change every frame. So that's why we are not setting it down here when we're up initializing the animation. We're setting it up here during the animation. Okay, so that's the first one. And now you can guess where we're going with this. Because now we have another variable, which is going to be our target that we need to be able to expose over to here. Now the target, in my current thinking, the target doesn't change uh, during an animation because... Uh, if you change the target in the middle of an animation, then um, the eyes will immediately jump over to that target. So I haven't wired it up for that to be uh, animatable in the sequencer, but it could be. And for anything that needs to be able to animate uh, or update on an animation in the sequencer, we need to set it here in the update animation, not in the initialize animation. But if you're 100% sure that you're never switching the target once you've set it up, pardon me, to save a couple of processing cycles, which you'll never notice, um, you could set it up down here. But we're just going to go ahead and set it up down over here. So, okay, we've got our current actor, which we know we have a variable called look at strength. We also have a variable on the current actor, um, which we can grab, which is going to be our look at target. So, and I may just need to scroll to the bottom here. Ah, turn that off, perhaps, so I can find it. All right, all right, all right. I'm just going to say get look at target. There we go. Better. Sometimes Unreal is too smart for its own good. Okay, so we've grabbed the strength variable. Now we've grabbed the target variable. Now, it is possible for you to, you know, use this metahuman and perhaps you have a scene where you don't want to have it look at anything. The last thing we want to do is create an invalid node. So it's expecting look at target to have something in there, and we're going to grab a measurement off of that. We're going to grab its world location. But if it doesn't exist, then that world location is nothing to grab, and that's going to be an error. It's going to be a runtime error. It's undefined exactly what happens in, in that case. It'd probably just probably be okay. But as good pro programming practice, we want to actually test to, sh to see, do we even have a target before we actually go and do anything? So before we do something, we're going to grab that look at target, and we're just going to say, is it valid? And I'll grab this one, the one with the question mark, and we're going to add that over to here. Okay, and the valid is going to give us two streams, right? This is a macro. It's going to allow us to choose what to do, if it's valid or if it's not valid. So, but of course, before we do that... There we go, nice and clean. Okay, if we don't have a target, then we're just gonna choose an arbitrary amount, an arbitrary world position for the eyes to look at. That way, if the blend value is set to one, it has something to look at, and that's gonna be up to you. It probably should be something that's about the same height as the character in, in space. If, however, we do have a look at target, that's when things get interesting. We wanna grab that target's actual we want to grab that target's actual world location. So I'm going to branch off of this pin and come up here, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to have to be a bit more explicit. There we go. Got to turn off the context sensitive because it doesn't, uh, the look at target, which is a component, um, doesn't actually have a world location property. You're going to see as soon as I force it, it's going to create a little cast node. There we go. It's the root component of the target 
that has a world location, not the target itself. So that's why we got this little intermediate thing, and that's why it didn't come up with the contextual on. But this is a nice little shortcut. When you know that that's the case, you can save yourself a little bit of time there. Okay, so, ah, uh, unacceptable. There we go. The return value being a yellow pin, that should probably trigger something to you. We we got a yellow pin which represents a three-axis vector. All right, so we got a vector of x, y, and z coordinates here. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to get for our uh, return value. And so why did I go and move that? Stop mucking around with your straight pin connections. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that and promote it to a variable. And so we're going to say if this is valid. Then we're going to set this guy up like that. And I forgot, I should have named the variable before mucking around with my pins, uh, my things, but here we go. And we're just going to call that um, look at vector. Perfect. Now, if it's not valid, and the reason I did this in a specific order so I could force myself to create that variable first, if it's not valid, we're going to just set that vector to something else. All right? And so we'll just do that set it and well, we can set that to something arbitrary I don't know let's have that uh, well why don't we pop out here for a second grab that target move it here Ooh, that's behind the character okay let's just close this up for a sec I'm gonna go to our multi view here target I'm gonna click in this window I'm gonna press F to find that item and there's the target there, and it looks like it's, I don't even know where the character is, way behind the character. Holy moly. That would also explain why the eyes were bizarre. Okay, so we're just going to say, that's probably good right there. We're, and then right down at the character's height, we just zoom in there. So that way, at least the character's kind of looking straight ahead as our kind of default. So let's take those, those numbers. That's going to be 360 by, honestly, 0 by 140. Okay, so 360 by 0 by 140. Somebody remember that for me. Whoa. Okay, and back to our... Is this the one? Mm, this looks like my other one, so I think I closed that up, didn't I? That was dumb. Got too many windows open. Classic blunder, right? Uh, so I'm just going to go and find that again. There's multiple ways of doing this, but I'm just going to use try, tested, and true, face, post process. Oh, I guess I did have it up probably correctly. No, I didn't. I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong project altogether. Okay, here we go. Let's do that again. This is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is my first. Unreal tutorial. Please like and subscribe, or don't if you find this embarrassing, which I am. Okay, and down here. Right, it was probably there all the time. I just couldn't find it. Okay, so um, what? <laughs> now, I told somebody to remember this thing for me, but there's nobody here, so I have to remember it for myself. Three sixty by one forty. Three sixty zero one forty. Three sixty zero. 140. There, that's a good default number to use for this particular character. We could get even fancier and look at the character's height and get a position of one of its bones, like the eye bone or something like that, and then offset that, use that, but that's getting real fancy, and I'm not going to be doing that any anytime soon. So, that's it. And um, if you are a conscientious developer, you might take a minute to clean this up and explain what the heck are we doing here selecting all of these with the left mouse button to draw a box around them, hitting C to create a comment, and this is uh, cache actor look at variables. All right, so now we're going to know what we did, and this also makes it more convenient to move things around. Make sure we haven't got any mistakes. By compiling, we are good to go. So now we're almost there, folks. We're almost there in the anim graph. We've already 
wired up the look at string. Now we have a look at vector, which is either going to be that default vector of 200 by 400 that we put in there, or it's going to be the actual location, the world location of that target object that we created. So we're going to bring that in here as well. And that one we're just going to wire up over to here. And then I'm going to spend some time futzing about to clean up things because that's how I roll. And we're going to just uh, straighten that connection to the reroute node. Lovely. Okay, good enough, right? And so that should be now all we need to do. This is the moment of truth. I wonder whether I've forgotten something or not. I'm just going to grab these guys, comment that. Can we not do a comment in uh, Anagraph? I thought we could do a comment in Anagraph. Maybe it's just this. Ah, yeah, I guess like, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say uh, look at target. And uh, can I just. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that way you can sort of see in context if you zoom out, you can find your stuff really easily. Okay, moment of truth, folks. Let's just see if I know what I'm doing or not. Okay, we're going to close this up. Now, this is not necessarily going to, ugh, not going to happen in real time. And we've got one more problem that we have to fix. So let's just make sure that this is even kind of semi-working. I'm just going to go, all right, we got devil eyes. That, folks, is actually to be expected. What is happening here when we simulate? Here the eyes are kind of stuck in that position just because uh, Unreal doesn't update this map until we close it and open it again. Our eyes will be in a new position. But it's not looking at this target at all, it seems. So what's going on? Well, the eyes position are changing. So something is actually happening. It's the offsets of the eyes is not, are not correct. Now, I'll be really honest with you here. I watched a tutorial that told me how to figure out what these vectors needed to be. And I have forgotten what the actual you know, process is. The, the, the key is you're going to look at your skeletal mesh. So I'm just doubling, double clicking that. And we're going to go and find, for example, our left eye. And we're going to look at those vectors. Whoa. Here we go. And sorry for the drunken navigation. Got a 3D mouse here. It's not cooperating. You can see that the, uh, the vectors are sort of this z-axis pointing straight forward. So the i is actually oriented along the z-axis with the y-axis pointing down. So the look at is the, along the z-axis and the i, which is normally be pointing up, the y-axis is pointing down. So, remember those things. Maybe I did remember from that tutorial. So now, if we go into our look at Anyone getting sick of popping into this blueprint all the time? Jeez Louise. There we go. If we look at our two nodes here, right now this is the look at axis is the y axis. We said the look at axis needed to be the z axis. So that's what we're doing there for the z axis. And then the look up axis right now is actually in the negative y direction. Do that for the left eye. And you know, might as well do it for the right eye as well, because I'm pretty sure this is right. <laughs> Shouldn't I probably spoke too soon, but let's just see. Alright. And save it. Technically you don't need to save it. I'm gonna minimize so I can come back in case I messed up. Well, actually, I'm just gonna do this. And let's simulate that. Hello! How low? And if I grab my target point, oh yeah. Let's go and take a look. Nice and close here. Oh. All right. There we go. Grab that target. Hopefully I can see it. Oh, I can't see it. I've zoomed in too much. But you can see that is actually working. And now you can see exactly what I meant about the uncanniness of those 
the eyes following without the head following. So let's get on. I can do this forever. Let's get on to the head. So the head's going to be very much the same process. Sadly, copy and paste really is not going to work too well here because the variables are going to be unique and Unreal is kind of funky that way. This is one of the benefits of working in C++. There you can copy and paste it. It's just text, so it all works. But, so we need to use the, do the head. So the head is going to be under the body, and that's going to not use a post-processing blueprint, so we can go straight over to here. Okay, we've already got our look at set up for the head, right? We said we were going to do that. Um, but, let's go back into our event graph. We've already got an update animation node just ready for us, but first we need to cache that expensive operation of the get actor. So we're going to do the um, looking for uh, init. It would be helpful if I could spell blueprint initialize animation. We're going to get our actor of class, our classy actor. We're going to select our blueprint. MetaHuman base in my case, and we're going to promote that to a variable, which we will call current actor. So all starting to sound familiar, right? And remember, we're doing that so that we can have this all cached, so we don't have to do this multiple times. Now that we've got the cached actor, we can pull up here. We can grab that current actor. We're going to get the. We need to get the look at amount still. Um, that's very relevant. We're going to get the target, of course, and we're going to get the head uh, move amount, which is a value. So uh, let's get the current actor, and we're going to say get look at strength, which we're going to promote to a variable, which is called look at strength. Perfect. Now we can set that bad boy over here. Then we're going to... Oh boy. Then we're going to get our head move amount. Perfect. Okay. We're going to also promote that to a variable for the exact same reasons as the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It's a problem. There may be a quick cure for it. But finally, this is where we can also grab our vector, or our object, right? Our look at target. And as before, we don't want to assume that we've got it, so we have to do a test to make sure that it's valid. We'll grab the macro version of this, not the function version. Which gives us just these two outputs, which is nice. There it is. There this is. For what it's worth. This becomes so second nature to me that I don't even notice that I'm doing it. And it results in much cleaner looking blueprints in the long run. It's worth the extra second to do it. I just wish there was a bloody hotkey for it, because I do it so often. And then there's no key binding available. Alright, so... Um, if the target is valid, then we need to get its world location. So we're going to split off of this pin. We're going to remember, we're not going to be able to get it because it's not actually available on that object. It has to get cast. But to save us some time, this is a lovely feature of um, Unreal Blueprinting that you don't get in C++. It can be super frustrating if you're reading a tutorial and someone says, yeah, I use get world location. You're like, well, I can't find it. That's because it's just not the current context at this time. All right, so we got that. We're going to get the world location. Okay, and then we're going to save that value. And that's going to be our look at vector again. That gets set over here. Perfect. Oh, Nelly. Okay, and then if it's not valid, we're going to set that variable, which I can grab over here faster, even set it to, what was it, 400, 200? Or is it 200, 400? I don't really know. 
doesn't really matter we're not going to be using it necessarily and we do that okay so this is all ready to go and we're going to grab that minus this move everything up a little bit press c to get that and we're going to do cash actor variable actor look at variables i guess perfect all right finally really this is really only one little thing we have to have to do and that is to wire up our animation graph properly we've got our look at vector we already know what that is that's going to be over here we're going to wire it up to there and we got the look at strength and we've got our head move amount so let's just think about this for a second we want if we wanted the head to move exactly to look at the target so like the cat always pointing exactly at it we already have our look but we want it to be controlled by the strength so that we can say i want the character to look at something i want it to not look at something right so those two variables come into play if we want it looking completely at the object the head move amount is going to be 1.0 and the, if we want the character to be completely looking at the target, we want the look at strength to be 1.0. The max we can have for an alpha is 1.0. If the look at strength is 1.0, but we want the head to be half of that, the head move amount will be 0.5. So how do we, what do we do to combine these values? Well, math, <laughs> multiplication. We're just going to multiply them together. That way, if the look at strength is 0.75 but we want to have half of that that's going to be 0.5 times 0.75 which will result in a smaller number right which is whatever it is 0.35 so i'm just going to go over here i'm going to say multiply boom multiply these two bad boys together we bring that up to here and we're good to go all right and uh, do some basic cleanup because why not something like that there it is look at the target beauty compile cross the fingers simulate that you know didn't look like the head was moving well let's let's find out let's get into our sequence got the head move amount at 0.5 there's always some hiccup when you're doing a tutorial especially a long one like this so let's just see we're going to go into our animation we're going to go into our sequence we're going to take a look over here in the sequence all right whoa 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 Grab that target. Okay. And what do we got here? 1.5. Let's just turn on simulate here. Oh, she's looking, but the head isn't moving. Okay. Let's go and take a look. Should be something obvious. Do I edit this part out of the video or do I leave it in warts and all? Right? There's, I'm sure there's somebody watching the video now going, See, you fool, you've forgotten this thing. So we're just going to quickly debug. It's definitely uh, with the body. We've got that blueprint going. It's active. I'm going to go and take a look again. I got my vector, which is being set here on update animation. Well, we're setting it there. This I, I know this does this, even though it says it's not valid. It's not valid currently, right, in, within the blueprint. Um, go to the anim graph. Let's take a look. Well, there you go. Right? We're going to animate the freaking head. There he is. Oh, come on now. There we have it. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. 
Now, there are more complicated animations here that are complicated things that can be done. You might even associate the torso movement a little bit with that. You know exactly how to do that. You just got to figure out which bone you want to animate. Or maybe it's a bunch of bones. I'm not really sure how complicated you want to get. And each of those can be a percentage, a smaller, decreasing percentage of the movement, starting with the, the top spine bone and moving your way down at decreasing percentages to get that really fluid motion. But, you know, for our purposes, this is probably plenty, plenty good. What do you say, ji -yun? Good. Glad to hear it. So let's just test out that we can actually animate these guys. So there's a couple of different things we're going to do. Uh, we'll put this way over here for now. And now we said we were going to animate these properties, right? So if we go to, and I'm just going to save everything. Let's, everything's been saved because this has crashed on me before in the past. Um, so I'm going to go over here and on my main character, you can see these are the two values that were exposed to sequence. If you remember way back at the beginning of the tutorial, we went to the blueprint, the main uh, blueprint, and we created those variables and we turned on the exposed to sequencer or exposed to cinematics, I think it was. That allows us to see these properties here. So look at strength being a number one. So we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to say, we'll set that to zero. And then, you know, over a couple of frames, let's just see. There, we'll just do one second, 30 frames. We're going to set that value, keyframe it on. So actually, I forgot to keyframe it, didn't I? There we go. So we're going to set that to zero. We're going to create a keyframe. Boom. And we're going to go to 30 seconds. We're going to set that to one. Okay. So let's just see. She should now gradually look toward... Beautiful. Now, one of the reasons this isn't working um, in the, the editor is because this is not being exposed at the construction script level. Um, we could add that to this. If you wanted to really see what's going on in the sequencer, you could turn on that construction script option. Um, but I believe there may be some performance implications, so it's probably not the best thing to do. If you can live without exactly seeing where the target is or just having to pop into simulate mode in order to see that work um, you're probably better off so so that's great um, and let's uh, let's change that head uh, amount as well so what we're going to do is we'll um, this will be a weird one it'll be a weird effect but we're going to add that head in so there's the head move amount and um, we're going to start with that let's start with that at zero keyframe that in fact, we're going to move that keyframe over here. And then let's keyframe that to, oh, I don't know. Let's go to full one over here. And then maybe we'll bring it back to 0.5. Let's see that work. Hey, now. Oh, unreal weirdness. I think it's because I have this node selected, isn't it? 0.5, we're going to say 0 here. And that's 1, and that's going to be 0.5. Okay, so let's watch that. Let's take a look. Right, so the head went all the way So the eyes went first, giving you the side eye. Then the head takes a look all the way there, and then it kind of comes back. So that's actually kind of an interesting motion. I'll probably get rid of this free keyframe, though, and I think you get a pretty neat looking motion. <laughs> the side eye, and then I'm looking at you, target. I'm looking at you. Now, let's actually animate the target. So that's easy. We're just going to add that target as a track. We can just bring it in here like this, drag it in here. There it is. We need to say that we want to animate the transform of this target. We are not animating the rotation or the scale. So I like to keep my timeline clean, so I'll delete those guys. So there it is. And um, let's keep it uh, right here at that keyframe. And then let's, we'll go over to here and we'll have some fun playing around with the target position. Oh dear, I got two useless, anyway, that's fine. So um, 
that's that and then we'll move ourselves over to maybe over here and we'll have that I don't know what just happened what am I grabbing I guess I should get out of simulate mode shouldn't I if I'm going to do any animation okay there we go so we got the target I said I wanted it to be here location going over to here Okay, we're gonna, that should be automatically keyframed, and then we'll just ping pong it back and forth, or maybe we'll come really close, and then maybe we'll go up and down here. Whoosh, whoa. Okay, and then maybe we come back to something a bit more reasonable. Okay, let's take a look at that. Let's just save everything here and let's go simulate. We'll start over here. A little ping pong action. I thought I saw some bizarre eyes going on there. Let's take a close look. There are limits to how you know, you you can push the metahuman mesh beyond what's reasonable with some of this stuff. So you have to be careful, right? So that's, you probably want either more head movement at that point, so that the head actually moves more. So why don't we, why don't we keyframe that so that we want the head to actually move completely. Well, maybe not completely. Let's go with 0.75. So that when she looks up, it's not quite as bad. There we go. And don't forget, we've got that target way up. These are some extreme motions. So, you, you know, your mileage will vary. You want to keep that fairly reasonable, but there it is. So, hopefully this tutorial was useful. I'm not going to be like those other YouTubers and say like and subscribe, because I don't know how many of these are going to do. But, hey, if you did like it, maybe a little comment would be great. And since I'm still learning, if there was something that I did that was inefficient or could break in a production environment or uh, you know of a better way of doing something, by all means, leave that in the comment. I'm always willing to learn. And who knows, I may even revisit this tutorial in the future. Anyway, thanks so much and I uh, hope this was useful to you. See you out there in the Unreal Universe.